Hey, welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the Chroma Keyer node. So we're going to jump into Fusion and Fusion has a, a few keyers and the Chroma Keyer being one of them. One thing about the Chroma Keyer is it allows you to use basically any selected colors from a scene. And even though other keyers like the Delta Keyer and the Primat Keyer allow you to pick different colors, they're, they're more geared towards blue screen and green screen keying and the chroma keyer is more of a general purpose keyer so you can use it for any color and it, there's a million ways to uh, key and remove backgrounds and all that stuff but we're going to uh, use the chroma keyer to key the background of this footage so before we bring the note in anytime you want to key you kind of want to look at your footage and see what's going on and we can tell in this footage we've got hair blown around so that's going to be an issue there's fine hair there's hair in the back and uh one of the big problems is her straps here are about the same color as the colors we're keying out so all this little stuff is going to cause issues and just so you know before we jump into it there's no magic button to automatically key stuff out with any keyer really you can pull a decent key just with a click of one button, but depending on what the uh, the project requires and entails, you're never really just gonna pull a perfect key. There's a lot of work that goes into it. It's not just throwing a keyer on. You, you have to uh, do some rotoscoping work, some mat work, and a bunch of other stuff that goes with it. So I'll do a few things to show you the, the workflow and what you can do to uh, tackle some of these problems, but we're not gonna dig in and make this a production ready key because that would take us an hour or so and I'm trying to keep this short. So let's jump in and add a chroma keyer. Chroma keyer. Now the chroma keyer gives you uh, two options to key. You've got the chroma method which pretty much uses the RGB values of any selected color. Color actually uses the, the hue and saturation values, well, not saturation, the hue values of a selected color. So if this was say a pink background, we'd probably go with the color because we're trying to pick out pink in a specific color. But since white really isn't a color, these are more shades, we're gonna go with the chroma key type. And to be able to pick your color, all you have to do is click and drag on the screen and it'll start pulling color. And I threw a background in the back so we can see what's going on. That's where this uh, blue is coming from. So if we need to add, we can just click and select. And as long as we're on a chroma key, click and select and keep selecting more colors or more shades. So this is what we got in the beginning and it's pretty sloppy now once you click this tab over here on the color range you can see all the the range that it kind of selected and from experience really messing with some of this stuff isn't going to get you anything better or worse it might tighten in some stuff but once you start playing with this it's extremely finicky so just be careful while you're redialing some stuff in. So you can use your red, green, blue channels right here to dial it in. You can dial in your luminance a little more or less if you want to get your color in there a little better. And once you selected your color so you don't accidentally start picking colors, you can click this lock color picking. So now you won't be able to uh, accidentally pick more colors. And your soft range controls the softness of the color range that you uh, selected. So if we start adding this up, you can see it's uh, removing more. Now up top you have other menu uh, items and I'm going to skip this image one and go straight to the map first. Now within the mat for the blur, you have the typical blur filters, box, Bartlett, multi-box, Gaussian, and fast Gaussian. And this will blur 
your, let me zoom in, this will blur your mat. So add a little softness to it. You have your typical clipping modes, which are frame, your domain of definition or none. And right here you can uh, contract or expand your mat you selected. So if we expand it, it goes out, contract it, it goes in. Now your gamma right here, it raises or lowers the uh, semi-transparent areas within the, your, your, your mask. So you can see those raise and lower. And your threshold kind of controls that transparency. So any values lower will kind of turn dark and uh, remove that transparency. Any values higher will brighten it up and add to the transparency. And restore fringe, just kind of restore some of that fringe data that's going around that mat which we can't see now, but when we make some adjustments, we'll be able to see later. And invert mat, just invert your mat. Now down here, you've got options for inverting your solid and garbage mat. Now where these come in is on your node itself, you've got three additional inputs. So your first input is your regular mask, your blue input basically telling it where this node is going to uh, take effect at. And it has nothing to do with your actual keying. It just tells it where this node is supposed to take effect. You've got this light gray input, which is your garbage mat input. So anything within this input is going to be considered garbage and be taken it out, taken out. So I can either go to this box itself, this rectangle, invert it here, or I can go to my chroma here and invert on my garbage mat selection. And we can go in and tighten up our key and remove everything on this side with the garbage mat. Make sure she stays in there. There we go. Now your other input here is for solid mats, meaning things you want to keep in the mat and not be keyed out. So we can see we're having issues with her eyes up here. They're being keyed out because it's within that uh, color profile that we picked. But we can simply drag any lips in input it we'll shrink it down we just put that over our eyes and we can always keyframe it So that is considered a solid mat that will not take in keying data. And if we want to do our other eye, we can just copy this ellipse, paste it, and instead of connecting that straight in, we're going to build on our solid mat using the multi-merge. So we'll bring our first one in, bring our second one in, and we'll plug that into our mat. Let's take our second one and we're going to get rid of this key data and use it on her other eye. And now we'll go ahead and keyframe this in. And there we go. We've got both her eyes added to the solid mat so our color key don't affect them and technically <laughs> you would kind of do this to everything I would honestly if if I was creating a uh, production ready product I would take a spline and literally 
go all the way around her everywhere and create a solid mat. <laughs> way better than this, but just to prove a point, I would create a solid mat around everything I don't want keyed in and I would keyframe it all. So it would follow her body. But we're not gonna do that today because it's time consuming. So now we've got a general key, but it's still pretty sloppy. You can see stuff around her hair. You can see uh, other stuff in here happening, other stuff in here happening. So how can we correct this hair? There's tons of ways. Like I said, you could rotoscope it all out, create mats. It depends on what your product requires. So for something quick though, we could always add a bitmap. Bring this in and we can use our luminance. We can start pulling some info. And I'm gonna invert this because we wanna keep her hair. So all I'm looking for is a level that maintains that detail in that hair. I don't want to pull it back too far to crush that hair out. I want to keep that detail in that hair. And that's pretty good. And using this, you can see why we're getting some of that uh, flicker and issues in the back. But we can take this. Now plug this into our solid mat. And if we look at our output, now we've got more of that hair detail in. And I'll unplug it so you can see when it's gone. Now it's back. And once you have that plugged in, you can uh, start messing around with your your levels on your bitmap to start bringing in that detail that you want to bring in. Now this is where we kind of want to go over to this image tab up here. And even though there's no spill, I'm not worried too much about spill. You've got options to uh, control spill on a blue screen or control spill on a green screen. And we have neither. So I, I really don't care too much about this spill on this specific image. But I'm gonna change this to well done. And we've got this fringe gamma. So if we start changing the gamma of that fringe, you can see we're pulling in that hair detail and it's coming back into our image. And we can change our fringe size. And our fringe shape. And you can mess around with the colors if you want. I'm not going to, but you can see now we're getting some of that hair detail back into that key which is great and then you would come back over to your mat and start messing around with your gammas thresholds to start bringing out some of that data and some of that info so you can see once we start doing some work other than just trying to push a button and get some key you can start pulling a good key on pretty much anything but like I said it's going to take work to mask out this additional stuff coming through adding more garbage mats in the back and uh, getting that perfect key so that is the chroma keyer I will see you in the next episode